In this video, we're going to take a look at the unit circle. We're first going to take a look at how to write the equation of a circle, and then look at how to locate points on the unit circle. So unit circle means that the radius of the circle is 1. We're going to consider a point P with the coordinates x, y on the unit circle. And then we have the center is the origin. So we're going to label that O. Now I'm going to connect these two points and we know that this length is 1 because it's a unit circle. Now A is going to be a point on the x-axis and it's going to be located right here. So we know that this distance here will be x. So the coordinates of A is x, 0. And then the vertical height of this right triangle that I've drawn is going to be y. Hence that's why the point P is x and y. And those are the coordinates. So then using the Pythagoras' theorem, we obtain that OP squared is equal to OA squared plus a p squared. So substituting the values in, we have 1 squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now I'm going to put these in absolute values because it doesn't matter what the numbers are. And when we square them, it's going to become positive. And I also want to also point out that this point p could be in the other quadrants as well. So uh, I simplify and I get 1 equals x squared plus y squared. So this is actually the equation of the unit circle. And actually you can see that this is obtained from Pythagoras. Now if the equation um, of a circle with the center of the origin has a radius r, instead of making this right side 1, we're going to put r. Now remember from back here was Pythagoras and it was 1 squared, so this will actually be r squared. So uh, let's take a look at an example. So to determine the equation of a circle with center at the origin and the radius is 6. So we just have to plug this in, uh, the 6 into r, and we get 6 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 36. So this is the equation of a circle. Uh, the center is at the origin at 0, 0, and the radius is 6. Now let's take a look at some other questions when it doesn't work so, I guess, perfectly. So if you know one of the coordinates on the unit circle, you can find its accompanying coordinates using the equation of the circle. So determine the coordinates um, for all the points on the unit circle that satisfy the conditions that are given. Draw a diagram and tell which quadrants the point lies in. Okay. So the information that I've given to you is that the x-coordinate is 3 fourths. So <clears throat> we know that this distance here is going to be 3 fourths. So a point on the unit circle might be this point here. Another point <clears throat> could be here, because it doesn't say which quadrant um, the point was going to be in. So using Pythagoras, we know Let's draw, actually, let's draw my line here first and draw a triangle. Now, we're going to use Pythagoras, and we know that this x value is 3 fourths. So we're going to go 3 fourths squared. We don't know what the y is, so we'll go plus y squared. Now, we do know that this is 1, and the reason we know it's 1 is because right here it does say that it's a unit circle, which means that this will be 1 squared. So we're going to expand this. So y squared, when we subtract 1, we're going to go 16 over 16 minus 9 over 16. So y squared equals 7 over 16, and we can square root. So we get plus or minus root 7, and we can square root 16, and that's going to be 4. So notice the square root does not cover the 4. So from our picture, we can see that the y value can be root 7 over 4, or negative root 7 over 4. So the coordinates, we would say, if it's in quadrant 1, it would be 3 fourths and root 7 over 4. We have a point in quadrant 4, and that's going to be 3 fourths and negative root 7 over 4. <coughs> All right, let's take a look at one more example. 
So let's say this time I give you the y coordinate. And the y coordinate is negative 1 root 3. Negative 1 over root 3. But it does, this time I did tell you that the point is in quadrant 4. So I'm going to specifically put a point over here. And I know that this is 1 because it's in the unit circle. And I'm going to draw my triangle towards the x-axis because that's how I measure my points. And the y coordinate is negative 1 over root 3. So we don't know what x is, so we're going to find x. And you can actually think of this as using Pythagoras or using your unit circle equation. So that equals 1 squared. So x squared is equal to 1. Oops. x squared plus 1 over 3 equals 1. So x squared equals 2 thirds. So x equals plus or minus root 2 over 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, because we know that it's in quadrant 4, we actually only want the positive x value. So therefore, my point is going to be root 2 over 3 and negative 1 over root 3. So let me just write that little part. So we only want positive because the point is in quadrant 4. All right, and then these are some questions that you can practice, which we'll do in class. All right, now we're going to do this last part here, and we're going to relate the arc length and the angle measure in radians. So recall that the formula for finding the arc length was A equal to R times theta. So in a unit circle, this is really nice because the radius is 1. Then we just get A equals 1 times theta, which means that A is equal to theta. So this means that the central angle and a subtended arc, meaning that it opens out to this arc on the unit circle, actually have the same numerical value. So we're going to use this function, which you might see sometimes, and it's called P of theta is equal to x y. And we're going to link the arc length and theta, which is the central angle in the unit circle, to the coordinates x, y, uh, which is a point on the terminal arm of the unit circle. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know, so if I draw theta here, we know this is a unit circle, so I can put 1 here. I know that this point here will be 1, 0 because it's a unit circle. And this value here will also be theta on the unit circle. So we would call this point P of theta. At the top here, this point would be 0, 1. To the left here, we would have negative 1, 0. On the bottom, we would have 0, negative 1. All right, so let's see how we're going to use this. Now, before we do that, however, we need to recall those special right triangles that you've learned before. So remember the 30, 60, 90 triangle. This has a ratio of root 3, 1, and 2. And then the 45, 45, 90 triangle has ratios 1, 1, and root 2. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, but now we're actually going to extend this a little bit because we're actually now working in radians. So 30 degrees, remember, is going to be pi over 6. And then 60 degrees is going to be pi over 3. 45 degrees will be pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to write that in my triangle so that I can interchange using degrees and also radians. So this example here that I want to show you is on this unit circle, we want to show all the integral multiples of pi over 3, um, just in one rotation, so from 0 to 2 pi. And we're going to label the coordinates for each point um, on the diagram. <coughs> so excuse me. So pi over 3 um, is 60 degrees. So let's draw something around 60 degrees, which is around about here. Okay, so we're going to call that P of pi over 3. And then over here, now it says that we want to show all the integral multiples of pi over 3. So the next would be 
over here, which then would be 2 pi over 3. Okay, and then in the third quadrant, oh, sorry, over here we then have 3 pi over 3. And then over here, we have p of 4 pi over 3. And over here, oops, sorry, no, that was even equal. Let's actually erase that one. And we'll make it a little bit straighter there. Okay. So this one here will be 5 pi over 3. And then we rotate all around to get 2 pi, which equals... 6 pi over 3 if you like. All right. <coughs> so what I want to do is to find the coordinates of this pi over 3. So I'm going to draw a line down here. Oops, that's not very straight. So draw a line, and we're going to label this as pi over 3. And we know this is going to be 1, but that actually doesn't matter. So using my special triangles, knowing that this is pi over 3, I can now label my size of my triangle to be of the ratio, um, sorry, so this will be root 3 and 2, and the line beside it will be 1. Okay, so actually before I label this one, let me show you something. So the side beside pi over 3 is 1, so this will be 1, this will be root 3, and this will be 2. However, we want to label this on a unit circle, which means that this hypotenuse actually has to be 1. So what I want to do is I want to divide this by 2. So proportionally, I need to divide all these other points, or oh, sorry, all these other side lengths also by 2. So now we have a hypotenuse of 1, which makes it a unit circle, and we now have an x value of a half and a y value of root 3 over 2. So we can now write this as half and root 3 over 2. If we go to the second quadrant, it's going to be proportionally the same. The only thing is that my x value is now going to be negative because we're going in the negative direction. So I have negative a half and root 3 over 2 because it's going up. The point over here, remember, because it's a unit circle, this will be negative 1 and zero. Okay, going down to the bottom here, same thing. If I drew the triangle, this would have the same ratio. So this is still pi over three. So I still know that this is going to be a half and root three over two. However, both of those values will be negative. So I'm going to have negative half and negative root three divided by two. And then lastly, in the fourth quadrant, I have 5 pi over 3. I still have a positive a half, but I'm now going down, so this will be negative root 3 over 2. And actually making it a full circle, the point here, whether the angle is 0 or 2 pi, this would be 1 and 0. Now you can try the other ones um, by plotting on the unit circle using pi over 6 and also pi over 4.